morning everybody it's a little chilly here too but it's not too bad it's going to be a beautiful day in the neighborhood and i'm trying to figure out what's going on with my hair but <laughs> it's clean and i'm just trying to get some routines in place so i know what to do with it it's kind of driving me nuts but it's all good i haven't had bang I haven't had uh, a face with no bangs in a long time so <laughs> it, it's kind of weird so today is Tuesday we're in our master bedroom we're in our master bedroom and you know folks a lot of us are gonna are getting ready to go back to work yeah uh, and I know you've had this last month we've had like 36 days now of being in the house and <sighs> It's time. It's time. But we got to do it in a safe way. And my my doctor sent out a little little essay today on the oximeter that you put on your finger and it 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 checks your blood oxygen level. And I've had one of those for several months because I had a friend who who was anemic and her oxygen level was really low. And <laughs> So I decided I would just see what mine is. And I got one because I've been anemic before and it's not fun. It is not fun. My daughter-in-law's been anemic when she gave birth to Sarah 14 years ago. She lost a lot of blood. And so being anemic is not fun. And so I got an oximeter just to see where my blood, blood oxygen levels were. You know, I'm 98, 99% all the time. And, I'm, and I bought some balloons so I can blow up balloons and strengthen my lungs. You know, lungs, you just have to exercise them. Get some, get, get some um, deep breathing going on. And we're going to go back to work, y'all. We're going to get back to work. We're going to get back to business. Now, a lot of you have been home and you've been feeling sorry for yourself. And it's time to stop that as we're getting ready to go back, getting ready to go back to work, then there's certain things we've got to do when we come home. Now, right now, while we're still trying to be safe, we need to take our temperatures. You know, if you've got a temperature, you don't leave the house. Do you hear me? Don't leave the house if you have a fever. Yep. And a lot of companies are going to be taking uh, temperatures. So if you get in line to go in and get your, you know, we've got six, uh, six feet of distancing. If you get in line to get your temperature taken and you've got a fever, they're going to send you home. They're going to send you home. So take your temperature before you leave the house. Get in. Let's make this part of our routines to do this. And then what are you going to do when you get home? Here's the first thing you do when you get home. And I know you're not going to like this. Put your clothes in the wash machine. Have a change of clothes in your laundry room. And take your clothes off and put them in the wash machine. And wash them. And put on, maybe go take a shower Let's keep our houses pristine. And I'm not talking about looking great. Let's keep let's keep our keep the outside germs from coming inside. We got to do this. We got to do this. And uh, Justin was telling me this morning when he goes to the grocery store, he does not put the groceries on the counter. He sets the grocery bags on the floor and puts them away and wipes them down from there. He doesn't contaminate his counters with bags that other people have touched. Unless you're going to bag your own groceries, but still be careful. I thought there were only 41,000 deaths. 86,000. I don't that's not a number I've heard, but I haven't looked this morning, so you could be right. But the main thing is we got to be safe when we come home because we don't want to bring those germs at home, germs home because 
our kids are still there. So let's take care of ourselves. Let's change our shoes when we get home. You know, get a pair of shoes that you only wear in your house. Not one that you've gone to the grocery store in and you've come back in the house. Let's change them. And then you can disinfect your shoes and you can give them a good scrub with a rubber scrubber because this thing is going in the dishwasher. This thing will go in the dishwasher. Yep, and there's some disinfectant stuff you could probably put in a spray bottle and spray the bottoms of your shoes. But you got to keep in mind, the more we disinfect things, the more things mutate. <laughs> Yep, that's why hospitals get overrun with, with bad germs. Yep, bad bacteria, because it mutates. So there's, there's a balance here, but I don't know what the balance is, but we've just got to do the best we can. We've just got to do the best we can with what we have where we are. <clears throat> so uh, one of the things we're still seeing shortages of are paper towels and toilet paper now toilet paper that i don't know what's going on with that i don't know what's going on but paper towels i got a remedy for purple rags and these purple rags are on a bogo right now you put one set in your cart and we'll send you another set so you don't ever have to use a paper towel you don't ever have to use a paper towel when you have a supply of purple rags around. And right now, you can get six of them for $19.95. But you just have to put one, one, one pack in your cart and we'll send you a second pack. So I want to talk to you today about an essay that I'm sending out on, on Thursday. But I'm going to give you a preview of it right now. It, it's all about turning our homes into a vacation getaway. Yep, a vacation getaway. And when we have our homes where they're comforting, we got a testimonial many years ago. And I've, I've told you this testimonial several times, but it bears repeating. We never see this in the news anymore. But many years ago, Israel was a danger, dangerous place. And this, this danger was because of car bombs and people had to go out and go to work and people were afraid, afraid. And what, what people did was they couldn't wait to get back home. Well, this lady said that her home was messy and it's full of clutter. And finally, when she started getting rid of the clutter, her home became this sanctuary from the, the, the fear that was outside of her doors. And we're, we're all experiencing a little fear of going outside and getting back to normal. So we need some little systems in place to protect us. So, but let's make sure while we're home right now, let's make sure that we, that we clean our homes and we get rid of the clutter, get rid of the surface clutter and do the things we need to do to keep our homes safe for us so that when we come home, we can relax instead of, of, uh, instead of being panicked and not feeling easy. You want your home to be a comforting place. That's why we, as Leanne says, we get our indentured servants going. So if you've got a bread machine you've had on the shelf in the basement for many years, get it out. You can make bread and you can put things in your slow cooker. I had the slow cooker going all day yesterday and we had the most amazing pot roast and if you've never made a southern pot roast, I got a video on it. And it's just, you know, a pot roast is only as good as the gravy. <laughs> That's all I got to say. But you got to make the gravy. And you make the gravy from browning the pot roast. And I came up with a new use for my bone broth yesterday. Because my bone broth gets a, a 
in my container that I put it in, it gets about an inch thick of the fat that comes out of the bones and are the marrow. And I cut that up into little pieces so that I can use that in browning my, um, browning my, my meat that's going into the, into the crock pot. And, and then I make the gravy from that and it's just, it was, it was beautiful. Even Robert commented on how good it was and he doesn't like meat falling apart. He likes a little bite to his, to, to the beef that he's going to chomp down on. And it, that bone broth made some amazing gravy some amazing gravy. It's all about the gravy. Yep. If you're from the South, it's all about the gravy. Now we, Robert comes into the kitchen. He was working on our new grill. It's new to us grill. And we're excited to have a, a barbecue grill. We haven't had one and we've never really had a, a big gas grill. And yeah, the, it's old. It's been at the office, but it's probably only been used a dozen times. And so he's been working on that all day yesterday and all day today. And he's been, you know, changing out the orifices. I can't say that, but it's just, we're, we're excited. I don't know what we're going to cook first. I don't have a clue, but it'll probably be something wonderful. And we can, um, he put it in his tree house. So we're getting our house ready for doing maybe a little more cooking at home instead of going out to eat all the time. You know, I foresee our restaurants being much um, more open than they have been where every other table gets, um, gets somebody at it. And booths are going to come up with a new shape. They're going to, booths are going to be maybe like little capsules you get into. I don't know. I'm just thinking off the top of my head, but let's turn our homes into a place where we want to be. We've been at home for a month now or more, and and when we can be here because we want to be, not because we're forced to be, it'll be a different story. It'll be a different story. So folks, let's Let's love our homes. Let's make our homes be. And, and I foresee another thing too, y'all. We're going to make room in our homes for our older family members. And the, instead of putting them in nursing homes, we're going to start doing this, folks. Because nursing home and assisted living places have become places where people go to die. And if we can make our homes multi-generational and have a mother-in-law suite for your family, this could be a good thing. This could be a good thing in the future. So I I predict that we will be having mother-in-law suites behind our homes. I saw this. Uh, please, I don't need to write a cookbook. Leanne has the cookbooks. We, uh, cookbooks, I'm not, no, I got a whole YouTube channel of, of things that I've cooked in the month of November. Well, that's usually the only time I ever cook, but I've been cooking a lot here lately. And I've, I've got some sourdough bread started, sourdough bread. And my sister, my daughter-in-law calls it feeding the baby. <laughs> So you have to feed the baby every 12 hours. So the reason I was running late for this show is because I've stirred up some flour and water and I was going to put it in my sourdough stuff and it was lumpy and I wasn't going to put lumpy flour in, in my sourdough starter. No, 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 no. So I got it. What is on Lent? I got it smooth and put it in and stirred it up. And I'll feed it again in another 12 hours. And I think tomorrow, if it starts bubbling and doing like I want it to do, I will make some bread out of it. 
but every two to three days you can make bread out of it. And then you take some leftovers, you save a cup of it, put it back in the refrigerator, and I, I it's in the refrigerator, Leanne. I got it for you. Anyway, I've got two starters. I've got one that I've made, and I've got one that Emily gave me. Herman. <laughs> Now, Leanne's daughter, Caroline, names her starters too. She has one named Cordelia, and I don't know what the new one's name is, but you just have to let it collect the... Uh, at my, my friend Melanie has one that's 700 years old. I can't, I can't imagine having a starter that's 700 years old, but hey. Yeah, Amish friendship cake is a lot like that. Yep. So it's, I've learned a new skill while I have been home and staying focused on keeping everything going. And it's making bread. It's, it's making things with bread dough. Sebastian. <laughs> oh, you just have to laugh at Miss Caroline. She is so cute. I had a Herman years ago. Uh, my daughter-in-law is getting tired of baking bread, but hey sourdough waffles some people just take the dough if they have left over and do fry bread out of it just put it in a skillet with some oil and fry it up and put some jam on it my, oh your microwave quit well that's not a bad thing i rarely use my microwave yeah that's true and you can dry your sourdough mix if you want to and and Put it in a, a mortar and a pestle and yeah. So there's lots of things we can do with sourdough. Sourdough pancakes, sourdough rolls, sourdough bread. I made bread in a Dutch oven the other day because my bottoms weren't getting, getting brown enough that I wanted. So one video that I, I watched was really good. It said, you know, Put a stone, I have a pizza stone, so I put that in my oven, and then I put my Dutch oven in there, and I put my bread in the Dutch oven and put the lid on it so it holds it all together. They're liking Caroline's cooking stuff. How do I make buttermilk? Well, buttermilk, you just have to put a tablespoon of vinegar in your regular milk but I buy buttermilk I buy buttermilk by the half a gallon all the time I don't it's it's a staple that I have in my house that I have to have buttermilk or I can't cook I have to have onions or I can't cook but I have backup buttermilk yeah I have powdered buttermilk that I can make up and I have um buttermilk I have dried onions that I can hydrate. You know, I have backup food sources. They make a buttermilk powder and it's really good powder. Yep. And I've used it for years. Used it for years. So folks, what you gonna do today? It's Tuesday, it's plan and play day. Let's think about planning for the future. We need hope. We need to plan for the future, and we're planning on having a cookout. Whenever we can, we will have a cookout because we're getting our grill ready. I'm learning how to make rolls. I'm learning how to make buns, a hamburger bun. I may never, ever buy another hamburger bun in my life because my hamburger buns are better than anything that you can buy. And people don't know what buttermilk is, but when you make butter, if you've ever made butter, and you can make butter with your mixer, y'all, you just pour cream, heavy cream, in your mixer and turn it on. When I was 12 years old, I was making whipped cream and I over, over beat it and I made butter. And I'd already put the sugar in it, so it was sweetened butter. But the stuff that's on the top, that's buttermilk. That's buttermilk. 
So let's, let's dream about having people over and having a party and, you know, catching up on those birthdays. And I know a lot of people have been having drive-by birthdays, which I think is so sweet, but it's not news. But there's a lot of people that have missed birthdays and anniversaries. And Leanne's talking about a science project of putting cream in, in a, a quart jar and shaking it. And the kids love to do that. You make butter. And it's some really good butter, too. And we've missed our friends. We really have. Recipe for hamburger buns. It was just a simple recipe I found online. It was good. And I'd do it again. And I brushed some egg wash on it and put some sesame seeds. So I got sesame seed buns. <laughs> So we can, we can catch up if we want to on these birthdays. We can have a big group birthday party when we all get together. You know, this, yep, Leanne and I miss each other. She lives up the mountain. We used to not even miss each other because she was in Boulder, Colorado, and I was here. So we can, we can catch up on our birthday parties. Mark had a birthday while all this is going on. So... We got to have a birthday party. We got to do lots of fun stuff. And we can do that. But let's get our houses in order. Let's do some crisis cleaning. Do you know what crisis cleaning is? Set your timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes. And go spend 15 minutes in your kitchen. 15 minutes in your kitchen. You can start dinner while you're in there, but get your kitchen clean. My kitchen's clean, so I just have a few dishes I have to put away where they belong. And then set your timer again for another 15 minutes and clean your living room. Put things away, play a reverse scavenger hunt, and that is grab something that doesn't belong in your living room and take it to where it belongs and then take something that doesn't belong in that room and put it where it belongs and keep doing that. But spend 15 minutes just focused on your living room. Feather dust, wipe down things, do everything you can to get this room looking pristine. You got it? And then the next 15 minutes is 15 minutes in your main bathroom. This is crisis cleaning. 15 minutes in your main bathroom. If you swish and swipe every day, it doesn't take long to clean your bathroom. It really doesn't. You can do it. So that's 15. Now the last 15 minutes of this hour is 15 minutes taking a break. 15 minutes taking a break. This morning, I had my ear pod in. It's charging right now. But I just tapped it twice. And it, my music plays. And it's random music. And it was uh, Wesley Phipps, I think his name is. And it was a gospel song. And it's, um, Great is Our Victory. And we're going to have victory, y'all. We are going to win this battle against COVID-19. And we're going to get through this. We are. And we're going to be better for it. Because we're going to be more hygienic. We're going to wash our hands. We're going to wipe down things. We're going to, I mean, I've been this way a long time because of Eric Dodge. I have been this way a long time. So wiping your hands, pulling your doors with your, your coattail, <clears throat> opening doors. I have, I have, um, so I've rarely been sick in the last 10 years until last April when I missed my sister's wedding and sister Patty just had her first anniversary on April the 19th. I couldn't go to her wedding, but she has married a, an amazing man who takes good care of her. He is a good Christian man and I am so happy for those two to have each other. So great is our victory. Yep. That song came on. And then How Great Thou Art by Randy Travis came on next. 
So how good is that? That you turn on your music. If you have an Alexa, just tell it to play gospel music and see, see what you randomly play gospel music. And it really changes your whole attitude for the day. So put on some fun music, play, you know, songs are about three minutes each, five songs. You've done 15 minutes in your kitchen, 15 minutes in your living room, 15 minutes in your main bathroom, and then just re relax, relax for 15 minutes. And then you can get up and do it again. You can get up and do it again. So everybody, I'll see you at three o'clock for tea time. I've got my water brewing. I've got my tea going right now and I put it in my, I put it in my um, water bottle and it keeps it hot up until nine o'clock at nine. Yeah, How Great Thou Art is one of my favorite hymns too. I love you all. I will see you at three o'clock. So what did Randy Travis sing? He sang How Great Thou Art. Yeah, and I always say a prayer for Randy Travis whenever a random song of his comes on because he's had a rough time. But he's coming back. He may not ever sing again, but we have all his songs. And I can harmonize with Randy Travis, let me tell you. I'll see you later. Bye.